today I'll be showing you how to install the new compiler tools for C++ in C. This tool chain comes with most of the tools that you need in order to get started and compile projects in C and C++ on Windows. To get started, we want to go to the project for min GW. On SourceForge, you can download it. I'll put a link in the description below so you can get to this easier. And we're gonna hit the download button. This package here, it's called min GW get setup. I'm gonna save it to my downloads folder. And after it's downloaded, I have this min GW dash get dash setup. If we launch this, we'll get this installation manager setup tool where we'll hit install. We're asked where we want to install MinGW, and we're just gonna do use the default here, C MinGW. You also have a few options below. Basically, if you want it for all users or just for one user, I'm doing it for the current user. And then whether or not you want it to show up in the start menu and or on the desktop, you can select whether or not you want those. I'm gonna select both and then hit continue. It's gonna take a few moments while it pulls down things from the web. There's quite a few packages here. So you can run all sorts of different packages and utilities using the GNU compiler collection. So we're gonna give this a few moments. Make sure to hit continue once you've received most of the items. And now we have the installation manager, which allows us to grab the various different packages that are necessary in order to compile C and C++ programs. With the basic setup, we have various different compiler tools available to us. We have ADA, Fortran, C++, Objective-C and a few others. The one that we are interested in is the C++. So we want the GCC and G++. That's actually for both C and C++. I'm gonna mark it for installation. I don't really need anything else because I only want to compile C++ and C programs. If you want something else, feel free to do it. And after I've done that, I'm going up to installation and hitting apply changes. It's asking me to apply or defer. I'm gonna apply again. And now we are downloading all the packages that are related to the C and C++ compiler tools. Now this might take a few minutes depending on your connection speed and the traffic currently on the server. So sit back and relax as things come through. Once things have downloaded, we're going to install the necessary packages as well. It has to decompress and install those packages. And after everything is installed, it isn't obvious, but it will say up top, all changes were applied successfully. You may now close this dialog. Hit close. If you hit the installed files, we can see the various different packages that got installed and where they were installed. You might want to make note of this because we will have to use this in the future. So let's see if we can compile something with C++ or C. So start a terminal real quick, whether it's in PowerShell or the command prompt, doesn't really matter and I'm gonna type in GCC, and currently it says it's not recognized. All right, what about G++? Nope, not that one either. And that's because it's currently not in our environmental variables path. The tools exist on our system, but we cannot access them because the system doesn't currently know where they're at. So earlier we told the system where to install min GW. Let's search for that. I know it was on the local disk, C, and then I installed it under min GW. Look at that, it's located here. Inside of here, we see other various different folders. The one we're interested in is bin. Notice in this bin folder, there are a bunch of tools available to us, including GCC and G++, a tool to compile our C programs and our C++ programs. This is definitely the folder we're interested in, so I'm going to click up top and hit copy. Now open up the environmental variables path. We can do that by hitting search and typing in environment, and we should see this edit environmental variables for your account. And in here we see user variables. I'm interested in the path variable, so I'm going to hit that and hit edit. Now, if you made it this far, please smash that like button for me. If you're new to Linux, check out learn.savvynick.com for free flashcards on Linux terms that you can download right now. Now, there are a few paths I've already added in. I'm gonna create a new path, and by clicking new path, I can paste in the one I just got done. Copying. I don't want to edit any of the previous ones for different applications. I want to create a new one like I did. And then I'm going to actually add in a second one just in case I need some more libraries. I'm going to paste the same thing in and I'm just going to get rid of the bin portion here. That way, in case I need libraries, they're pulled in as well. Then I'm going to hit OK and then OK again. Now when I'm back to my desktop, I'm going to 
exit out of this PowerShell and start up a new one. After you started up a new one, because I needed to update things, a lot of people get caught up on that, not actually relaunching their PowerShell or their command prompt, which causes issues. And if I type in GCC or G++, let's see what happens. GCC.exe, fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated. This is actually a great thing because it means it found GCC this time. We just didn't supply enough arguments. What about G++? Sure enough, same result. Fantastic work. If you type in GCC space dash dash version, we should get the version of GCC that you're currently using, 6.3 from MinGW. And now I'm going to create my first C++ application using a notepad. I'm first going to include a library here. That's the IO stream library. So we can read and write from the console or terminal, PowerShell, what have you. Then I'm going to create a main function, int main, because we'll need this. And all I want to do is spit out something to the terminal console or PowerShell. So I'm going to do C out and it's going to say hello world. This is the most basic program we can really write, especially when you're first starting out. This is what people typically write out. One last thing I want to put here is an end line. That way we get things on a new line. And then I need using name space, space STD up here. That way the compiler recognizes these two objects. Then I'll save this file somewhere, file save as. It's going to put it in my downloads folder for now. I'm going to call it main.cpp. And then if I check my downloads folder, I have main.cpp available to me now. And in order to run this, I need to compile it with the tools that we just got done installing. Back to the PowerShell. I'll first navigate to my downloads folder. And then inside the downloads folder, I'll notice I have main.cpp. In order to compile our first program, I'm going to use G++. The first argument I need is main.cpp to point it to the correct file. Of course, I made sure that I'm in the same directory where the file is located. Then I'm going to write space dash O lowercase, which means output. So what's the program's name that we want after we output and compile it? You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call my main for simplicity. So this is the basic way to compile one program. And then I'm going to press enter, which will allow it to compile. Now back to our downloads folder, we have main CPP and main, which mean things have successfully compiled. I have no errors written out to my console or terminal PowerShell. So I can run that main program by simply just typing in main or whatever you compiled and created your program as and press enter. And to simply run it, I just do dot and then just type in main.exe and press enter. And look at that, it says, hello world. Your program has now compiled and ran successfully. Congratulations on installing the new compiler tools as well as running your very first C++ program. Now you can continue in exploring how to create more advanced C and C++ programs on your Windows system. If you need a place to start, I do have a C and C++ course located at learn.savvynick.com. If you like the pace of this, it's much like the video you just saw. We use Visual Studio Code and learn how to create a program that keeps track of a list of items and various different concepts, including objects, functions, encapsulation, vectors, reading in and out of a file, and many more things. That's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.